I'm Andrew, and this is Bugwood. So in Bugwood, you and the other kids have your trusty nets and baskets, and you're headed into the woods in search of the coolest bugs and the prettiest flowers. You start out the game with a limited set of the components for each player, and the rest are in the reserve, which I'll get into in a second. But you can start out the game by rolling two dice, and always pay attention to which is going to be the left die and which is the right die. So in this case, we got two, four, and we will just find two, four on the map. So for every combination, those 36 combinations, there is a space. So here is two, four here, which means this is the initial starting space. And the randomly selected start player can choose to activate that space or any of the adjacent spaces. So in this case, let's say blue is going first, and they just decide to stick with that one. Actually, they'll probably go over here to that space, and they will activate that with a cube. So they can choose to activate it with a cube or a disc, and they've activate, activated it with a cube, which means they gain two more cubes. So they go to the reserve and add two more cubes to their supply. And that would be the blue player's turn. Now, the game is going to end when somebody's running out of uh, pieces. So one strategy is to try to get a lot of pieces and try to do a lot of things. Whereas another strategy might be to try to run out of pieces as quickly as possible and have the most points at that time. So it's always a temptation to get more pieces and do more stuff, but you never know if somebody's going to try to rush things. So you might want to focus on getting the correct pieces. But anyway, once we've taken the first turn, then yellow can go and they can activate any of the adjacent spaces to the one that has been activated. So maybe they decide to go for this scoring space. So they place their one available meeple piece in here, and that is a scoring space. So all the spaces that are scoring uh, require a meeple, which you only have one of, so you need to use actions to get more, uh, more meeples if you want to be able to do that. For example, this space here, you can use a disc to gain another meeple from your reserve. But here, now at the end of the game, the yellow player is going to gain two points for every ant hex they occupy, which is all of the hexes in this row here. And then it would be the red player's turn, and they do the same thing. For example, maybe they just want to go ahead and use a disc to get three points. That might not be a great early game move, but it's an example of one of the moves that you can do over the course of the game. And as you can see, things start to spread. So, for example, maybe the white player here, I'm going to use a black disc for the white player, but they activate this space that says roll 2d6 and activate the hex with a cube from your reserve. So this is a little bit of a wild one. So here they're going to activate 1-5, and even though it's not their turn, or they already placed once, they also get another cube from their reserve, and they're going to put it onto 1-5, which actually, in this case, is already occupied, but that's fine, and they get two more cubes as well. So that's one full round, and um, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, there are different interesting scoring spaces that can create an interesting race as players try to get to them without letting their opponents get to them first. And it's uh, pretty simple to play because all you have to do is activate any space next to one that has been activated, and the options spread over the course of the game. And if this, for example, had been over here, then... The options can spread even more quickly because you can activate anything next to anything that's been activated. So even though we started here, you could start jumping over here to do stuff. Anyway, thanks for taking a look at Bugwood. I'm Andrew, and bye.